What is a high reliability organization? It's an interesting question because it's an organization which takes things like safety, worksite safety, environment, quality and reliability really seriously and performs exceptionally well under conditions where other people don't do so well. So the question that I want to start with is how do you go about becoming an HRO? I'm not going to say you are one yet, but this is your aspiration, I think. Qantas is a very old airline, one of the oldest in the world. We're approaching our 100 year anniversary uh, very soon. And as a result of that, we've sort of grown in complexity across our business. So over the many years of organic growth, uh, some of that complexity has taken us uh, away from where we want to be. And uh, we're looking at ways now to model back in that simplicity and clarity around our operations, clarity around our risk and controls it, and making sure we've got uh, an organisation that's uh, fit for purpose, that's lean with the right management structure and capability. We'd like to mature uh, our organisation towards uh, being a HRO, and, and the model that we've taken, or, the, or the, um, our approach, is to start with understanding our processes, so get lean, efficient processes. Those, are those, those processes would lead us to aligning our organisation or organisational structure to meet those uh, processes efficiently, understand the risks to the deliverables out of those processes and then what controls and especially what critical controls need to be in place, what metrics should be in place around their lead and lag indicators to actually get a, a grip on the health of those controls and, and have put that into place. So it's a, a closed loop. Uh, type feedback system that continues to evolve and improve. Over a period of time, like any legacy carrier, it, it, there's, there's been some wonderful learnings and the business has adapted those and there's um, uh, you know, nuggets of gold that's included in those. However, layer upon layer of those um, additions has created a complexity that makes it difficult for our staff to comply and difficult to, um, to meet the needs of a HROs. So we're trying to close the gap between work as imagined as work and work as done so that we can better understand and deliver a, a operational excellence as well as a, a safety excellence through our business. I, I don't know if you agree that what you may be struggling with is that you've got the processes and they're all in operation but they're not always leading the life and delivering the results that you originally wanted them to achieve. So what you are trying to do is to make them truly effective. That's right. If it's simply you've got better alignment of accountability and authority um, and we can push that decision making down to the area of the business where the expertise really is, so to try and get it to the right levels in the business, we're very careful about um, getting those processes mapped on, on function level to what we want to deliver, getting our organisation to line up and match that as well. So we get the right authority at the right levels. That's, I think, a really important point. We often hear about worker empowerment, but we don't really often know what it means yes. because uh, we're looking at the aircraft engineering and uh, environment, and you've got people who are working on their own quite often, don't you? We're dispersed, of course. We're an international carrier. We work across all time zones and, and countries, and we have staff you know, spread around the world that also has a different... Um, sometimes different cultures, different beliefs uh, that we have to try and amalgamate or bring into our fold and, and, and do things the, the way we require. You obviously have a lot of contractors as well, don't you? We do, yes. We, we employ uh, companies and so forth to work on our aeroplanes and uh, people either on our line stations or in some of the aircraft that we have overseas for heavy maintenance and managing that difference in culture and managing that quality standard that we expect um, it takes uh, sometimes extra effort um, and extra attention from, from our staff and, and maybe a little deeper assurance type program level of work that we, that we roll across these businesses. Aviation goes up and down. Um, and we went through a down period a few years ago. We're operating the aircraft, utilising them um, harder and longer. That brings a challenge as well. So um, we have to keep that very fine balance across, um, across our airline in um, meeting our customers' expectations, meeting our board's expectations and, and our shareholders. 
And how much of this is driven internally? And how much of it is because you're told where others, this is what you're supposed to do? Strategy comes all the way down from the board for us. I um, report through various governance uh, processes through to, into our board uh, safety committee. Some of those KPIs come from the board. Some of those we deliver to be able to meet our requirements. And they're all through our CEO. So, is, um, so that strategy is delivered right from the top uh, from Qantas and it's lived and breathed from, from our board through our CEO, through all of our staff. One of the big contrasts that is made uh, is between process safety, which in aviation is called airworthiness, in oil and gas it's called process safety. It comes up with different, various different names. Uh, and personal safety, and they're often yeah. seen as being distinct. So Andrew Hopkins talked about what he called the Longford Trap, where mm -hmm. Exxon ran into problems. Uh, BP had the same problem. Do you find this a challenge uh, for you in Qantas? Definitely. Operational excellence for Qantas has is, is, is been part of our DNA, and everyone understands it and works um, diligently toward right. that. The gap uh, around applying that same level of discipline into our um, to our safety, our people's safety, is the biggest area that we're working on now. So we're trying to harness that, we're trying to learn from what we do operationally and moving that into our people's safety and empowering some of our, our people's safety committee groups to be a part of that right now. You have one advantage, which is Qantas has a, a brand of the S for Qantas almost stands for safety. Yes. Uh, but that's within Australia. But you don't just fly within Australia. You do a lot of flying around the whole of the world and a lot of the work has to be done to your aircraft away from Australia. How do you find that as a challenge? Because they don't necessarily carry that Australian value that Qantas is safety uh, nearly as well as you do inside Australia. Yes, um, so of, of course supplier um, approval or uh, assessment right at the very start is, is core to us. So when we're looking at uh, engaging with an external company that, that would touch our asset, we, we definitely go through a very um, critical vetting process. We look for those elements of not just, you know, cost performance, uh, but we look at safety, we look at quality and operational excellence. And we set very tight criteria right up front within our contracts. And then there is a level of oversight, so managing that workforce or foreign workforce on aeroplanes, we, we, we have a supervision or a direct direct supervision over those entities and we also then overlay that with uh, an assurance program that's weighted towards the risk that that uh, contract would pose. So we have multiple layers uh, across that. We have great reporting, so from our staff continue that are there, that are oversighting and from say our cabin crew that are you know, when they're flying in and out of foreign ports, they maintain the same uh, near miss reporting, the same culture of reporting that they have, and they report also against our, you know, our, our contractors and to the same level. And we try our best to hold all of those guys to the same standard. One of the issues is the leadership that you expect. Uh, do you do you try and work with your contractors outside? To, uh, to identify the leaders who are going to be aligned with your values? That's a little bit tricky, isn't it? Yes, definitely within we look at our, our leadership and our talent and we map our guys against uh, some of those core values or the Qantas beliefs. Of course, one of those core beliefs that we have is um, everyone has the right to return home safely. So the, we link a lot of what we do. We link our performance and our personal performance is linked to, to those core um, beliefs and also to that, the strategy that we were talking about earlier. So we can try and drive uh, the same level of commitment um, right, right across the levels of business. I think that's the way you have to go. You don't have the, 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 um, the power and the strength that, for instance, the oil companies have, because the way I've experienced them operating is that they have a very clear stamp. And uh, basically, if you don't like their stamp, then you don't work for them. Yes. and that's. That's a great advantage that they have. For us, it can be difficult because even though you know Qantas is um, is a big fish here in Australia, in, in in our small pond, when we go overseas, we may be flying in and out of ports where we're a very small fish. We're a very small part of 
the activity or the tempo of, of activity at, at a foreign port and therefore we're not sometimes not that important to some of those areas. Sometimes when they are the only provider of services at a certain port for your aeroplane. So the competitive tension isn't there. So you, can, you can't say, well, if you don't do it, I'll go somewhere else. So you have to work with a certain uh, provider or contractor. You have to be very clear about expectations and performance. And um, we, we try our best um, through, through like a, the oversight program and the contracts to have um, a bit of a stick and carrot approach in, in how we would work with these contractors to, to deliver our standards. Uh, I've never really met contractors who didn't want to, it's just that they sometimes needed a bit of a help. So the good news is that um, what you're doing is probably about as good as you're going to do. Just keep on doing it. Yes, keep on improving. One of the th questions I'd like to ask you is, if, is there one particular area uh, where you feel that your experience can tell people how to go about doing this? Um, Patrick, we've, we've introduced our new reporting system and with the advent of that uh, reporting system it was an opportunity for us to be able to capture data much better, capture more granularity and to be able to understand um, our risks better. And that includes uh, reporting around hazards and near misses, of course. So we use that information, we gather that up, we correlate that across with other data sets across our business to uh, better understand what was actually happening. So rather not just simplify the, uh, the near miss to the obvious things to understand it and then once we have done that push that back out to the business as an opportunity to learn. How can you get people to report the right things? Well we, we have a great culture we, we re-established uh, uh, the just culture um, uh, process across Qantas that, that allows people to report uh, I can I know how much self-reporting is happening because we track not just all the reporting but the, the self-reporting and and our self-reporting is increasing um, so I know that the culture and the confidence uh, and the, secu the security that our staff has to report incidents in including incriminating issues about themselves it's coming through so they're happy to do that and they are, they do that in the understanding that we use that information to better the system or provide uh, a system level assurance. It's not to go after an individual, it is to how do we best deal with this process or the issue um, and then learn from it and spread that learning, not just across um, Qantas, but also our other uh, entities, Jetstar and our Jetstar uh, branded airlines. Collaboration is a, is, a, is, a, is a core belief through, through Qantas and it's been driven by our CEO. So now we are learning from each other, we're sharing our best practice um, with, with each airline, we're sharing our resources and understanding um, you know, right across our business to either improve safety or improve cost competitiveness. So. Now that's, you're doing one of the things I really look for, you investigate near misses and you treat them just as seriously uh, as the actual incidents when you have them, heaven forbid. Uh, and you use, I presume, the same methodology? Yes, we use the same, same methodology, we use the same trained investigators, um, and we use the same processes. Uh, now one, one question, as you can probably hear from the, uh, from the noises and the thumps that are going on, this is a real aircraft that is going to go real places. How do you treat incidents? Do you treat them by their potential? or do you treat them by their actual outcome? We look at potential, so we look at, um, we look at the consequence um, of, of that um, occurrence and we measure the risk based on that potential. So it's potential is really, is that the one that goes to the board? Yes, it does. Because that's a real characteristic of an HRO. Yes. Uh, it's not what happened, it's what might have happened. Yes. And that keeps the board awake. That's definitely. So for us, uh, a classic example of that around uh, the workplace health and safety, we had lots of near miss reports on cross engineering where main entry doors of aircraft are uh, left ajar or slightly open. Uh, the perception of risk of our engineers was different to the perception of risk or the understanding that we had as uh, leadership or what, what that potential so there was no fall from heights incident, however we had numerous 
fall from height near misses. So my occurrence rate was going up. The potential was still there, a death. Uh, so that became a high risk report. And through our governance committee, that goes uh, all the way to our CEO. That's how you should do it. Respect for expertise, we, we at least implied, because we're looking at the people from the top right down to the bottom. They know what's going on, and you respect them for that. Uh, a, a lot of attention being devoted to what, not what does go wrong, but what could go wrong, and getting in there early. I think these are some very important messages. And the important messages we've also talked about, about leadership and not just operating with with the already preset that everybody within Australia knows about Qantas, but getting everybody else to, to live the message as well. But I will wish you success and finish with one last message, which is, that in my experience, the, an indication that you're getting more reports is not a sign that you're doing badly, but in fact is a sign that you're doing well. Thank you, Patrick. Appreciate the time.